The United States of America Constitution lays down the laws of the United States in common for the assistant trustees, Republican states' performance and operations. There is no direct mentioning of individual citizen rights unless we include Art. 2, Section 1, Clause 5, and Art. 4, Section 2, Clause 1. The rights of the natural-born preamble citizen and the individual free inhabitants of the free association of states are so written in the fundamental principles of the Declaration of Rights within the Constitution of the Republican form of state governments guaranteed by the United States of America Constitution. The natural-born preamble citizens of the United States are also the free inhabitants, greater than freemen, of the free association of the Republican form of states government subject to the general federal common law and guaranteed by the United States of America Constitution. These citizens of the United States are additionally protected by the, so-called, National Bill of Rights. However, these ten amendments were originally designed for the congressional naturalized denizen residents of the United States, i.e. the allegiance amalgamated and Maro's European proprietors who were not natural-born aboriginal citizens of the United States of America, even though, these European denizen proprietors have now become indigenous and natural-born citizens of the United States. The senior trustees or junior trustees of any type of trust are obligated to the beneficiaries created by the grantor and the trustees may establish a business trust or corporation to secure various gain for the beneficiaries of a private or public nature. From and prior to 1898, the federal corporate government of a copyhold colorable character and up until 1933 did intentionally usurp and impersonate the freehold United States sovereign or general government, thereby causing, to the present, a states of general emergency for both the sovereign government and individual free inhabitants of the United States of America, inclusive of such non-preamble and unconstitutional evil as 1. Disunion 2. Injustice 3. Disharmony 4. No defense, nor protection against the violations of preamble citizenship 5. Poverty 6. Slavery the 1898 coup d'état initiating in Wilmington, North Carolina, also called the Wilmington Riots, and in other states named other disturbances, under the fraudulent and illegal pretext of the Declaration of White Independence, November 8, 1898, has never been corrected in any branch, department or agency of the trustee receiver of the administrative government and the United States sovereign and general government. The administrative government of the United States has all but done away with the usurping bankrupt federal corporation government of the USA, However, as ministerial officers of the United States it has not respected nor complied with the preamble mission statement nor the contractual will of the people of the United States as it pertains to the posterity beneficiaries of, we, the people of the United States. 6. The majority, by far, of the population of the United States are property and wards of the Administrative Federal Government, AFG, via the 13th and 14th Amendments. The 13th Amendment does not prohibit voluntary slavery or servitude. The laws of the U.S. via common laws do allow for persons to legally contract even their rights and properties, therefore, one can voluntarily, through ignorance, application and contract his or herself into voluntary subjugation. The birth certificate, outside of the ignorance of the law, and lawyers, is basically the initial instrument that is used on bewildered parents by the AFG, municipal state governments greater than A. State Corporation, B. County Corporation and C. City Corporation. The overwhelming majority of the administrative incorporation government officers and employees are ignorant and completely in the dark when it comes to the distinct United States, their jurisdiction and their citizens thereof. The term, slavery, so indicated within the 13th Amendment is a code word coming from, in part, the words 1. Slaw, slow, sloth, slough, slav 2. Slav, slove, sloven equals Slavonic peoples and slab 3. Slab, slough. Slaughter equals a piece of meat, the word serf, greater than serve equals servant, applied to the English Caucasian people once meant serf people and landlocked slaves or property of the state prince. The word slow, sla, equals slough or slaughter also means to be uprooted or biblically to be supplanted. It, additionally, represents a defeated or punished thing. The artfully and deceitfully idiomatic term, white, comes from, one, wit, HWIT greater than least bit 2. White greater than a thing or creature greater than preternatural or preterlegal 3. White greater than to punish and to inflict pain. In this modern day cycle, the original slaves came from the conquered and passive Neanderthal people of old who were domesticated, 
domestic maid equals maid, by the ancient Morris complexion Moors, over thousands of years and various methods of cultivating them. This doesn't include the, so-called, non-Caucasian white persons who did not descend primarily greater than directly from the worldwide Neanderthal people. The word slave can only apply to white, blacker, persons regardless of your color. The phrase, involuntary servitude, once actually referred only to Morris and mulatto hued people. Even with all of the lies about the human drama, modern scholarship with its expert historians have never taught that we know of that the so-called black, brown, red or yellow people having ever volunteered to become slaves or to be put in bondage. The history, his made-up story, we are fraudulently taught, doesn't go that far. However, the so-called non-white races have a history of being forced into bondage or involuntary servitude. On the other hand, there is no history of the Caucasian English serf of Europe becoming a slave, he always was. The words slavery and servitude are rooted in the Latimor, Latimer, Latin words servio and service. The letter V is also pronounced B and F, e.g., serve equals serb or serf, means, to be subject to another's jurisdiction or control. The feminine of serve is servitus and it also has the meaning of liability to certain burdens. The 13th Amendment's omission of the phrase voluntary slavery and servitude is a crucial step in the arrangement of the 14th Amendment's white Negroes contracted serfdom and liabilities to indeterminate taxes. All preamble natural-born citizens, resident citizens and free persons, including those in government service for a term of years, are constitutionally responsible for a. Direct Tax 1. Property Tax 2. Capitation Tax 3. Ad Volorum Tax 4. Tax on real estate. B. Exercise taxes. The payment or fee placed on manufacture, sale, merchandise, and upon licenses to pursue certain trades, commodities, etc. However, no preamble citizen of the United States of America is subject to C. Income tax and D. License tax. C. Income tax is a tax on persons artificially constructed i.e., 14th Amendment citizens whether natural human beings or corporations that are attached to the United States of America Constitution, as the 16th Amendment, between 1909-13, and was a part of the corporational government of the U.S. implementing usurpation and impersonating of our general government. d. License tax is a price paid to municipal governmental authority for a certificate, or the document itself, which gives permission license tax being defined as a sum exacted for privileges of carrying a particular occupation. Exact from the lat. Exactio greater than exaction. Exaction. The wrongful act of an officer or other person in compelling payment of a fee or reward for his services under color of his official authority, where no payment is due. A license simply put is a permit, i.e., a document or instrument granting permission to do or perform something or not to do or perform something, by a sovereign or superior to a subordinate or inferior. It is permission or certificate of liberty granted. To gain a clearer understanding of the 14th Amendment citizenship the United Nations must have additional information about the true origins of the Caucasian white persons, people, in the early United States of America. There is and always have been a legal difference between 1. A. White person and 2. A. Free white person. 1. White persons. Members of the white or Caucasian race, as distinct from the black, red, yellow and brown races. C. E. G. Black's Law Dictionary, 4th ed., p. 1769. Free white person. Quote dot dot dot. European Jews, intermixed. Celtic. Iberians. Mixed Latin Celtic Iberians, and Moorish inhabitants of Spain and Portugal, the mixed Greeks. Phoenicians, and North African inhabitants of Sicily. It does not mean Caucasian race. Black's Law Dictionary, 4th ed. P. 792. Today in America a large amount of Caucasian white people are beginning to recognize that they are not free inhabitants. Anyone who associates his or herself with color superiority or otherwise is not a freeman. C. E. G. Black's Law Dictionary, 4th ed. However, all white black persons are legally considered as free men. Free men. A free man might be a man of small estate dependent on a lord. Every man not himself a lord, was bound to have a lord or be treated as unworthy of a free man's right. Black's Law Dictionary, 4 6th ed. All of the free men in America are bound by their lord, the municipal state. The term state is internationally recognized as, and often called prince. 
A prince is a lord over the population for the king, sovereign government, i.e., the national government. This is, in part, the state wherein they reside, i.e., the municipal administrative collection state. The term, white inhabitant, can be traced back to the Articles of Confederation, ADC, Article 9, Section 5, where it is used by a committee of states and civil service officers for managing the general affairs, and to ascertain sum of money. This is a contradiction of the term, free inhabitant, of the Republican states who enjoy and are entitled to all privileges and immunities of a free citizen expressed in Article 4, Section 1 of said Articles. In the Constitution of the United States of America, the phrase white inhabitant has been translated to, three-fifths of all other persons, greater than art. 1, Section 2, Clause 2, and to, such persons, greater than art. 1, Section 9, Clause 1, hidden from public sight. The Fourteenth Amendment although, never properly ratified into law. Section I, all persons, natural and artificial, born, greater than the act of being delivered, via birth certificate application, delivery, the transfer from one person to another of the res or a right or interest therein, which means more than physical transfer of possession. Black's Law Dictionary, 4th ed., or naturalized, greater than an adoption of an alien or foreigner via an oath of allegiance and not the Pledge of Allegiance. A naturalized citizen is a 8 U.S.C.S. Section 1401 subjugated citizen as a 14th Amendment born citizen, in the United States, and subject to the jurisdiction thereof, greater than lat. Serve, serf or slave, are citizens of the United States and of the state, greater than state of consciousness, status or rank in society or municipal, muni capio political party and democracy state, wherein they reside. No state, not even the administrative municipal states, shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities or the citizens of the United States. Greater than these citizens of the United States are the preamble, natural born and allegiance citizens of, 1, the AOC, Article 4, Section 1, 2, preamble posterity, 3, United States Constitution, Art, 4, Section 2, Clause 1, 4, the free inhabitants, Freeman of the Republican form of government guaranteed to all constitutional states in the Union and 5 8 U.S.C.S. Section 1101, A. 22. Nor shall any state deprive any person, greater than natural or artificial. Note the word citizen is not used, of life, liberty, or property, without due process of law, greater than within one of the many jurisdictions or different types of citizenships of the United States, i.e., preamble versus subject to, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction, greater than there are different jurisdictions for different types of citizens in the U.S., the equal protection, according to one's citizenship, of the law. In order to better comprehend the word of art phrase and greater than idiom, subject to the jurisdiction, we shall go to the United States Code Service, USCS, Lawyer's Edition, Interpretive Note and Decisions, 1, 13th and 2, 14th and 3, 42 USCS, Section 1981. 1. Prohibition against slavery. Dot an involuntary servitude. An obvious purpose of the 13th Amendment is to forbid all shades and conditions of African slavery. Greater than African slavery is not, and has never been, until recently, Negro slavery, while Negro slavery, greater than those who were supplanted completely about 6,000 years ago. See Genesis chapter 2 verse 420 greater than part of the Neanderthal people. This is not Adam Cadman but it is a man of the dust of the ground, alone, only, was in the mind of Congress which proposed the 13th Amendment. It, the 13th Amendment, forbids any other, I am, The question must be asked before the United Nations is why? How come Congress did not forbid Negro slavery in the 13th Amendment? nor voluntary slavery servitude. The answer is found, in part, in USCS, L. Ed., No. 2 Citizenship, 4 Generally. While the main purpose of the 14th Amendment was to establish, circa F., the preamble that also establishes the posterity, who are the natural born and allegiance citizens of the United States, citizenship of Negro, phrase subject to its, another's or someone else's, jurisdiction. The family of nations should be able to plainly comprehend that the idiom Negro, as codified by Congress, simply meant between 1865-66, as indicated within the 13th and 14th Amendments, a voluntary slave, who is subject to the jurisdiction of another, United States by way of being, a. 
conquered, b. Seizure or c. Contracts. Now we shall proceed to 8 USCS for added clarity on the different types of citizens here in the United States. 1. 8 USCS, Section 1101, a. 22, a. A citizen, greater than a preamble natural born and resident, of the United States, of America in the family of nations, is the principalized pre-entitled national of the United States. The word, citizen, used previously is not a corporation but a citizen within the meaning of the United States Constitution, i.e., Article 1-7 and a citizen of the Republican states entitled to privileges and or immunities. Greater than C, e.g., 8 U.S.C.S., Section 1503-A, of the 14th Amendment prohibiting any states from abridging privileges and or immunities of citizens of the United States. Also, neither the federal nor state governments are citizens. On the other hand, a corporation municipality is a person greater than artificial person or citizen not entitled to rights, privileges and immunities pursuant to the United States of America Constitution and the fundamental principles of the sovereign free inhabitants of the Republican form of state governments so written therein. All preamble and articles 1-7 individual human beings who are natural born citizens are legious greater than liga and allegiance in alliance or by treaty greater than the preamble and United States Constitution, with the United States of America government, in the family of nations. 2. 8 U.S.C.S., Section 1101, A, 22, B. A person, greater than both natural and artificial, or native and alien, who, though not a citizen, preamble, Articles 1-7, entitled, natural born, allegiance, etc., of the United States owes, greater than to bound or bind greater than compulsory constraints, also contractual, permanent, greater than not subject to change, allegiance to the United States, in the family of nations, greater than FON or FON, the administrative corporation, federal government of, in the United States government, the municipal corporate state governments in of the Republican state governments and the municipal incorporation cities, towns, etc. within the common law counties are not citizens of the United States, however, these persons owe permanent allegiance to the preamble and constitutional United States, FON. This is also true of a permanent resident alien, PRA. A PRA does not have the right to vote and is not entitled to privileges and immunities within the constitutions. The PRA is one step up or better than a 14th Amendment and 8 U.S.C.S., Section 1401 citizenship, because he was not born in the USA and can return to the land of his birth.